Nintendo whip out a surprisingly juicy Direct, Shadow of the Earth Tree might somehow be even better than the original, and Life by You gets a tragic death by Paradox. I'm Ash Dixon, and this is Jinx News. That's right, I'm back everyone, and man, it was strange missing three shows in a row. As you may know, I was at Download Festival over the weekend, rolling in the mud to bands like Limbiscuit and Sum 41. It's why I both look and sound like deaf right now, it's just one of those days. A massive thanks to Matt for holding the fort beautifully while I was away, and without further ado, let's jump into our first story. Nintendo took center stage with their Direct yesterday, and considering we all knew that the Switch 2 had been delayed until next year, and that they were very clear that they wouldn't be talking about it, all of our expectations were incredibly low. I mean, what could we possibly have to look forward to on the Switch this year? Well, turns out Nintendo had a few trump cards up their sleeve. Starting with the announcement that I don't think anyone expected, a freaking brand new Zelda game. And allow me to tear that band-aid off right now because nope, it's not another massive open world game like Tears of the Kingdom. No, instead Nintendo have decided to build an entirely new game off the back of their beautiful remake of Link's Awakening. And in The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom, the game is actually living up to its name this time because boom, Zelda is the main character. And while visually and mechanically it's clearly a successor to the Link's Awakening remake, it seems that Nintendo are building off the creativity of modern Zelda titles. That's because no, you won't be swinging a sword or yeeting boomerangs. No, instead Zelda has a magical staff that lets her clone a whole load of objects. From tables, to rocks, to trampolines, to even monsters she can then use to fight on her behalf. Better yet, the game is only three months away, meaning we actually have something to look forward to on the Switch this year. And the big IPs don't stop there. It's taken seven years since its first announcement, but we finally got some gameplay for Metroid Prime 4 Beyond. Now, sadly, this one isn't coming out until 2025, which makes me think it will be a cross-generation bridge from the Switch to the Switch 2. And maybe that's why, while watching the trailer, I did feel that visually it looked a bit dated. Perhaps there's a snazzier looking version that we'll see later down the line when the Switch 2 is finally announced. But either way, as Nintendo have proven time and time again, graphics pale in comparison to raw fun gameplay, and Metroid Prime 4 seems to be packed with what fans will love. Plus, there was a nice old Silux reveal for those who know their Metroid lore. Mario and Luigi are also getting a new game where they'll island hop on the part ship, part island called Ship Shape Island, I see now why they've called it Mario and Luigi Brothership. It's the first new entry in the series in almost nine years, meaning we'll be getting some sweet turn-based RPG action come November. In fact, if you like Nintendo RPGs, you've kind of been spoiled for choice this year with the Super Mario RPG and the Paper Mario Thousand Year Door remakes, and now this too. Another surprise announcement was a brand new Mario Party called Super Mario Party Jamboree. Now, as a kid that grew up with the GameCube, Mario Parties have always had a special place in my heart. And I can't lie, the Switch's Super Mario Mario Party was a big disappointment when it dropped back in 2018. Yeah, being able to switch up your die was a nice touch, but ultimately the boards were few and incredibly small. It seems they've addressed that in Jamboree, however, with five new bigger boards and two returning classics. Plus, with over 110 mini games and a new 20 player online mode, it seems that we're finally getting the fully fleshed out Mario Party we all deserve on the Switch. Now those were the main announcements, though if Butters from South Park is watching, he'll be very pleased to know that Hello Kitty Island Adventure does now actually exist. Otherwise, I'm curious on your thoughts. What did you think of the new Metroid or Zelda? Is it enough to keep Nintendo in the picture until the Switch 2 drops next year? Let us know down in the comments. It's finally here! Elden Ring's long-awaited expansion, Shadow of the Earth Tree, has been in the hands of reviewers and, unsurprisingly, it's fared very well. Now, we know people will want to go into this fresh, so we'll try to spoil as little as we can. We'll show you a couple of early major bosses, a few side bosses and some early areas, and avoid any story spoilers too. If you still want to avoid any coverage though, then feel free to skip ahead a few minutes. And the final verdict is, well, it's more Elden Ring, really, which is no bad thing. Reviewers have been praising the scale of the expansion, saying it will take around 40 hours to complete. That's bigger than most games 
in the genre. This includes 10 major bosses, most of which are on the critical path, as well as a whole bunch of smaller bosses too. The level design has been praised as well. There's a lot more verticality in this expansion compared to the vast sprawling map of the original game. And whilst most of the open world is pretty similar, the legacy dungeons, and in particular the smaller caves and the catacombs, see radical upgrades. Reviewers have also highlighted the extensive new weapons and spells, opening up a whole bunch more build opportunities, though of course your mileage may vary depending on how you actually want to play. Whilst the light great swords, beast claws and thrusting shields all look fun, I personally can't wait to go around punching goons in the face like Jackie Chan before spraying them with perfume like an attendant at the duty free. 60% of the time it works every time. However, expectations have been tempered somewhat by the reviews. This is more Elden Ring, but it isn't anything more than that. There are lots of reused enemies and even some boss encounters. The general gameplay loop is pretty much still the same. In many ways, this is more of a victory lap for the original Elden Ring than an expansion on the formula. The only real significant difference seems to be a more direct narrative approach. Rather than blindly wandering around trying to piece things together, this time a group of NPCs will appear alongside you at various points to essentially law dump exposition about your journey. I think this is a nice addition personally and something that improves accessibility for a notoriously obtuse part of the game, but it may mean those lore hunting YouTubers have less work to do. Anyway, Shadow of the Earth Tree drops on Friday. Remember, you'll need to have beaten both Radan and Moog to access it and have a character around level 150. Oh, and if it wasn't already obvious, it's going to be freaking difficult. Might be best to cancel those summer holiday plans. The Sims has dominated the life sim genre since its inception, and while it's much loved, considering the total cost of all the Sims 4 DLC adds up to over a thousand dollars, you can see why people are excited for a new competitor. Life by You was one such hopeful, though we've had some tragically sad news this week. Life by You has been cancelled by its publisher Paradox, and not only that, the whole studio behind it has been shut down too. Things were already looking doubtful when its early access launch got delayed last year. Its new date earlier in June was also missed before it was delayed indefinitely, and now, well, it seems it'll never see the light of day. And ultimately, despite people's best efforts, it just seems like the game just wasn't good enough. In a statement, Paradox said, this was an incredibly difficult call to make and it is a clear failure on Paradox's part to meet both our own and the community's expectations. When we come to a point where we believe that more time will not get us close enough to a version we would be satisfied with, then we believe it is better to stop. And look, that's a respectable decision. We've seen countless examples of studios falling for the sunk cost fallacy recently, and sometimes it is better just to cut your losses. But the lack of transparency and the abruptness of the layoffs, well, that's far less respectable. Either way, it seems we're gonna be stuck with The Sims for now with the new game's free to enter model, whatever that means. And that's the show. Do hit up our Patreon Jinx Plus to support us and get access to exclusive content. Hit those like and subscribe buttons and we'll see you on Friday.